welcome back to Switched to Linux. So today I want to have a quick look at a distro that has been on my uh, list for a while. And it turns out that last week they had a new beta release. And so we're going to go ahead and talk about that. We're going to look at the eLive distro. So uh, what, the, what this particular distro is, is that um, they have Debian with a customized Enlightenment desktop on top of it. So here is their main website. And um, what you can get over here is you can download the USB or the DVD. And uh, basically what they're going to do is give you a very nice Enlightenment desktop on top of the Debian. Now I am running over here, uh, you'll notice this is a com different computer than I usually have. This is actually my OpenSUSE with Enlightenment running on it. I ran this for about a month, I have a couple videos on that if you check my video archive. Um, but, uh, you know, I really like the Enlightenment desktop, and so I, I looked at eLive when I finally saw what it was, and I'm like, oh, I've been doing a lot more with Debian lately. Um, of course, I like the Debian branch uh, more than the OpenSUSE branch, simply because I'm more familiar with it. I think OpenSUSE is great. I'm just not as familiar with it. Um, and uh, so when I saw this, I'm like, ooh, this might be a distro to, to play with for a while. Well, eh, no. <laughs> We'll get into why I say that here, um, but uh, we'll get into a little bit of pros and cons. And um, basically, what we're going to do over here is we have uh, we have their whole site. They have a lot of uh, information about what they're doing. Um, they have the applications, a lot of screenshots, including some games. Now, they I do have the the beta release right now. So they just released beta last week uh, for the for the new versions and. Um, what you can do is flip through the website and see what they have on the list here. Hey, peoples. Debian's pretty cool. Enlightenment rocks. All right. So you can see the Office suite. We have uh, LibreOffice. They do give us Skype. They give us Inkscape, GIMP, and Blender. Um, we have some uh, media conversion files. We have VirtualBox. You know, this is there's a few curious things that I noted when when I uh, first got on here to see this. Um, but uh, what we're going to do is just have a look at the uh, at the distro itself. So I have it. Um, hold on, I'm trying to. <laughs> My uh, virtual box version of it kind of died on me. There we are. There we are. Let's go ahead and jump over to my screen. Let's see, there we are. Let me go ahead and I need to move that out of the way and transition. There we are. So here we are in our desktop. Now, um, what we hear, see here is we have a uh, we have a, a very clean desktop. Now the Enlightenment is interesting. I've played around with it a little bit. I moved this bar over here. I put a taskbar at the very top that should have a lot of my taskbar items. Uh, we have a, a docker down here, which is very nice looking. I mean, I really like the look of this docker. I, too bad I hate these docks. <laughs> um, maybe what I would do if I were running this is I might actually use this dock, put it on the top of the screen, and then run a traditional, more like a Windows-style taskbar on the bottom. One of the challenges is that the module that will show you the tasks in the open windows is not included. Um, I'm sure I could probably install it. Um, but first, let's have a look at the packages they gave us. So the default ones, um, I added the Libre to the taskbar down here. It actually was not originally on here. So we have terminology. We have a, a text client file manager. Now, this is one of those ones where they're giving us a lot more options. So we have both Chromium and Ice Weasel installed. And I love this logo, by the way. This is an awesome logo. Um, let's see. Now I have a more boring one on mine. Um, we have Ice Dove, Audacious, Rhythmbox, and VLC. So once again, we have multiple different media players, um, a few different image applications. Here's GIMP, um, Raw Therapy, Inkscape, Blender, Skype. Let's see what version of Skype this is. Um, sure, I'll agree to Skype's terms of service. Okay, so it's just the, the classic Skype that exists there. All right. Um, and then we have we have the install button down here, a demo of terminology. Now there's other software that is on here. I actually added in the upper corner. I went ahead and added the uh, the launcher menu so you can get a better feel for what's uh, what's on here. Uh, and I like this launcher. This is a very nice launcher. It's it's uh, you know quite a um, 
uh, it's quite a uh, more advanced launcher. I was actually looking for their screenshots. Actually, had a really cool 3D Pac-Man. I didn't see it installed on here though, uh, unless it's just named something different there. Anyway, um, but you can see a lot of the applications that are that are in, installed here. Um, a lot of disk utilities. So this would certainly qualify for me as a distro that is uh, that has a lot of the system tools that that uh, I like, and so that's uh, that's a win for me. See your internet. We have and we have like Dropbox, which I'm I hate Dropbox, so I'd get rid of that. Um, there's another web browser, NetSurf web browser. Transmission. There's another. There's four web browsers installed on this thing. Why? Why? Why are there four web browsers installed on this thing? Um, sound. We have Audacious. We have Audacity, Mix, Sound Juicer, Spotify, and Basic Volume Control. Graphics. See all the applications you have here. Let's see if I can make this menu bigger. I don't think I can. No, I don't think I can make this menu bigger on this um, this version here. Okay, so there's GIMP. There's Digital Camera Browser, Image Magic, Inkscape. Uh, there's the Libre things. LRF, that looks like Calibri. I'm guessing that's uh, maybe Calibri's installed. We'll know when we get down to Office. That might have been the, that looked like the reader that comes pre built with, with Calibri. There's Brasaro and a DVD encoder. So there's a lot of extra stuff on here. It's BMC Media Center. Okay, so yeah, we have Calibri pre-installed. We have extra ebook readers, the full Libre Office suite. Um, here's our games, of course. So we have under programming. Come on, come on, back, back, please, back. So a whole lot of uh, Ted. Let's see what Ted is. Okay. I'm guessing. Okay. So I'm guessing that's an ICE application. Is is my thought on that? All right. So we do have the good news is we have a lot of a lot of uh, uh, different information, like a lot of programs. So this, this definitely qualifies for me as one of those those operating systems that uh, that does have uh, enough system utilities to make it feel complete out of the box. Um, maybe a little too many applications, like four web browsers, why? Now I, have, I run four web browsers for development testing, keeping logged into accounts while I'm, you know, while attached to a web browser I'm not using. Those are good applications, but four basic web browsers is, is a little interesting. Now, um, the Enlightenment desktop, I really like it. One of the things that drive me crazy on this in here is it is changing the images on me every 10 minutes or so. And um, I've not yet found how I can turn that off. So if you wanted to set the desktop image as something specific, I would need to figure out how to shut that thing off. Let me kill Skype. All right, so otherwise our configuration down here, again, I like this. It's not the way I run a computer. Um, so I, I really like the bar. It's cool, it's slick, and I love the icon pack in this. Um, I really, I really think the icon packs here are good. I had a whole bunch of stuff just fall off my shelf over there. <laughs> Probably my internet just died. Um, now let's get on to what I don't like. The first major, major, major problem you cannot install this distro without paying for it. Um, I can't e cannot even test it on a, by installing it into a virtual box to see if I like it. So for me, there's way too many options out there that exist in the world. I'm not paying for the ability to install a Linux distro. But also this system was really being annoying in how many, like it's like it when I booted into it, Initially, the first about the first 20 to 25 minutes I was booted into this thing, it would just be giving me constant pop-ups and it was frustrating me to no end. 
And a lot of it had to do with the installer stuff. You can see even right now, the install guy is kind of trying to draw your attention. It's beeping and blipping down there. There's arrows going. So let's just show you what happens when you do this. Um, so it's, it's not an intuitive type installer. This is coming up just because I said give me verbose stuff. But you actually first have to go in and, and determine the, uh, the partitions, which uh, definitely if you are new to Linux, you don't even want to try this. Um, so it's giving me the partition manager. So now I have to go and download an installer. So like this is the installer. I have to now go download the installer. And by the way, when you first turn on the computer, it was down, it was updating the installer. So it's updating the installer, but now I have to go download an installer. And I have to, in order to, now it says even here to install the stable version of Eli, the payment is required. We dream to remove this in the next stable edition. See, I'm not even on the stable edition. I'm on the beta edition. I'd like to install this. I can't. I cannot even give these guys a very good uh, review thoughts or anything because I can install it. It's kind of being extremely annoying and actually their website's a little annoying too. And now I get all these pop-ups. Once I have done this, I'm going to go through pop-up hell for the next 10 minutes. Just everything just keeps showing up. It's like, stop. <laughs> and then I'll go do something else. And then more pop-ups. Come on. I know you got at least one more in you. Any more? Any more? Any more? Now the networking did work, so I was able to come up here. I was able to go right onto my NAS drive. I downloaded uh, a Beethoven's Symphony, so everything works out of the box. So codecs are all great. Uh, applications are great. Let's see, what am I opening that? So I'm opening that with Audacious. There's Rhythm Box. Open with Rage. Let's see what Rage is. Oh, how enjoyable! I have an invisible media player. I don't know how to stop it. <laughs> oh, there it is. I'm guessing that's maybe a terminal-based application. Never heard of that one. All right, so there's my general thoughts. Um, uh, obviously, this is not a comprehensive review. If you guys are like, you didn't review anything. No, I'm not reviewing anything. This is just a real quick test drive. My test drive, the thing crashed. I mean, it keeps on giving me crazy pop-ups. I can't even install even the beta version so I can test it out on a virtual box. And honestly, I had really high hopes. I saw that this was was enlightenment on top of Debian. I was like, wow, I think I might actually want to try this. No, no, not worth it. I mean, if I like enlightenment, hey, this one's already set up and works. I'll just play with this one on enlightenment, which by the way, if you're unaware, OpenSUSE is uh, releasing a new version of Leap tonight. Um, I don't know the exact time, but check out the OpenSUSE website for details on that. Um, more stuff keeps falling off my shelf. I think I have a ghost over there on my shelf pushing things up. But anyway, um, that's kind of my my take here on uh, on eLive. Um, I'm not putting it high on my recommendation list. It looks cool. It looks slick. Um, it's Debian Enlightenment, so I would love to be able to experiment with this more. I'm not paying to install a Linux distro, though. I'm sure if I really wanted to do uh, Debian with Enlightenment, I'm sure I could find uh, find a way uh, without this. And by the way, I just don't even like the fact that I have this taskbar, this Mac-like feel to it, but I cannot set it up with a Windows-like feel to it, um, at least not without installing uh, more packages and more modules, which certainly would be an option, but, you know... I have something funny to say about this model where where all sorts of things like of course elementary is going with this gnome threes with this format you notice how many people don't actually like gnome three notice that that there's enough of a fanboy base around elementary but a lot of people don't really like it you notice how mac really isn't a real good user interface why is it that people keep on trying to do these docs with mac and disabling like i i can't use the desktop on this I can't put a basic Windows taskbar on this. I have this Mac user interface, and even when I start something, I don't, I don't have a taskbar that shows me what's open and where. Well, I did not mean to open that. Yes, this is pop-up hell on uh, by my own inducing. Oh, fine. I should just, just die. Just die. Stop. Stop. Kill. 
Thank you. Jeez. Okay, so here we have uh, minimize that down. The best I can do is I have an icon here so I can see I have an instance of it. But if I pull this open, um, let's go. It does look like it is giving me multiple uh, different instances, though. That's that's fairly good news. Let's minimize this one. Okay, so I do actually have the ability to see that I have two different instances. As long as I can remember which one was which, um, then uh, I can do that. But uh, So that's good news. Each time I click on this, it is actually opening a new instance. Um, I did actually have to add this. If you did, if I did not add this and a new user did not know how to add this up here in the top, then you would not actually, by default out of the box, be able to get back to your original one if you had, had, you had minimized it. Um, but regardless, I mean, in the Enlightenment desktop itself is a little bit different uh, for some folks. And so, you know, I like it. It's neat. I thought that there were some stability issues I've encountered with it. This one does seem more stable than the OpenSUSE Enlightenment. Um, maybe I should just run some updates on this while I got the computer up and see if that resolves any of those. Um, but overall, my thoughts on eLive, hmm, no, I'd give it a pass. Um, give it a pass. If it's a, if it's a Linux distro based on Debian um, that wants payment to run any, the complicated installer, hmm, pass. I don't think there's anything here that uh, I couldn't get on something else. So that's my thoughts. Uh, eh, I don't like giving the giving the negative reviews for things, but uh, you know, in this case, you, you know, I kind of have to. Um, it's it's not bad. Look at it, but I'd be a lot more favorable if I could actually install it on my virtual box, play around with it for a while, because I would then go over from there and maybe put it on a computer and play with it some more. But that's kind of that. Well, anyway. Um, Hopefully that was uh, that was helpful, interesting. I do like the look of it, but eh, I'm just gonna say go ahead and pass for now. Uh, once again, if you would like to help support what we do, you can find me on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Tom M. And there are also some Amazon links down below. Thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.